We just got out of uh, Blair Witch 2016, the sequel, remake, reboot of the Blair Witch Project directed by Adam Wingard. We had a very eventful screening. They, there were people dressed up in costumes. Yeah, man. Uh, our local haunted house, uh, we live in Dallas, and so in Plano there's this haunted house called Dark Hour, and they had performers come by dressed up as lost kids in the wood, and they're yelling like, Josh! Where is Josh? Where is the map? I, you lost the map. I thought you fucking had it. Well, they didn't say that, but. I wish they did. I wish they would too. And what's great is one of our friends uh, from, from work, he's one of the dudes. He so, was one of the dudes, and he, he was kind of like standing in the corner. And yeah. So like before, or like during his He was the one that he, standing in the corner, because he couldn't look the Blair Witch in the eye. Otherwise, the camera would go. <laughs> Yeah, I went over to talk to him while he was standing there, and he was just like, I was like, hey, what's up, man? And he's just like, I'm like, okay, I won't mess with you. Well, no, he's in character. I understand that. <laughs> that was what he was told to do, was stand there, and when anyone would, like, mess with him, he'd go, where is the map? And then face the wall, conveniently under him as the fog machine. But yeah, shout out to Trent and Dark Hour for making this screening a really, really fun time. The movie, on the other hand... <laughs> I think the events prior were a little more interesting than the actual movie. You know what's funny is, I think the same complaints we're gonna have about this movie are the same complaints that people had back in 1999, except in 1999, the found footage genre really wasn't a thing. Yeah, so like when it first came out, Blair Witch was like this amazing original thing, and now it's like, oh, it's no. Yeah. But the people that didn't like it, they sat there going like, what the hell? The camera's shaking. These people can't act. Why is everything dark or in shadow? Nothing's happening. It was a lot of people yelling each other's names like, Josh! Heather! Daniel. Heather! Josh! So like, okay. I feel like we have the same complaints. The only problem is now there are more cameras. Yes. Because in the original one, didn't they only have one camera? The big old 16 millimeter? Yeah. They were carrying. Yeah, but in this one, they've got like drones and like. Yeah, they've got. pieces with cameras in them. <laughs> and I noticed the only reason they had that was so they could frame uh, uh, two people having a conversation which without having to cool. cut away. Which was a little cool, but it wasn't like. It's little cool if you're nerds like us and right. you're trying to figure out how people shot certain scenes. There's a part where a girl would like climb a tree to grab the drone. God, it took her like 10 minutes to climb that fucking and then, tree. And then suddenly like it would cut and I wait, wait, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, they have the drone up there. And so I thought those little moments were pretty smart that they set up these scenes to and use the advantage of, okay, we've got this camera here and this camera here. What angles are we going to get? But before we go any further, we're going to issue a spoiler alert here. This movie comes out Friday, but fuck it, we're going off the cuff. But if you want to skip to our final thoughts and our scores out of six stars, you can click the Blair Witch doll resting precariously on Brittany's face over there. Otherwise, ah! <laughs> otherwise you've been warned. This movie takes place, what is it, about like 20 Four. years? It says 24, yeah, it says 2014. May 2014. Is, okay, so 15 so years. So. Yeah. 15 years after the events of Blair Witch, it's Heather's brother organizing a small expedition to, for one last ditch effort to find his sister in the woods. Or at least find out what happened to her, get some closure. Right, because he finds this YouTube video in the house in the yeah. forest. And they, anyway, so long story short, they go, uh, they're gonna try to, try to uh, find out where this house is. Uh, and they meet the two, people who I guess found uploaded the, the video upload the video yeah. or found the tape or whatever and it's a rollicking adventure yeah. Heather's brother whose name is James his best friend Peter the black guy who dies Ashley is the black guy's girlfriend the two people I guess boyfriend and girlfriend who upload the video and the reason all this is being shot is because his friend Lisa Lisa is making a documentary about the whole situation. The movie starts out with 
This is footage compiled and found in the Black Hills woods of whatever Maryland. It wasn't a problem that I had with the first movie, because the first movie, honestly to me, felt like it was edited by somebody who just wanted you to have the basic info. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, there's a lot of extraneous stuff. stuff, but in this one, like, I don't think the police would edit cutaways or like get different angles of a shot right. as long as you can see wow, what's going on screen. That. That's kind of the important part to the investigation. They're traveling through the woods, and for 90 minutes, it is a lot of people running in first person, the camera shaking, the camera hitting branches and leaves, people yelling. There's a lot of jump scares in this movie, and I'm not somebody who, like, I'm just gonna, I hate any jump scares like a lot of hardcore horror fans are, but they were all, like, stupid. There'd be moments when, like, a character showed up out of nowhere yeah, and everyone started so, screaming. They were so, what's the word? Annoying. Frequent? Not, not annoying. No. Light. Like, and subtle. They weren't scary at all. I didn't yeah. Think once during this movie. They just spent so much time trying to, like, build attention and stuff that by the time the scare was here, you're already expecting it for 10 seconds. Like, well, now I'm not scared. There was no suspense or surprise. Kind of like the sound design issues I had with Don't Breathe. Whenever a character is sitting there like, hey man, like whenever that hand hits your shoulder, it might as well be Thor smashing his hammer on fucking concrete. It's just like, whoosh, hey man. It was really off-putting. I get that it's like supposed to be like a found footage movie or whatever. But you can still have good sound design that, like, you know... Just have it shot the same place. Just right. get the sound from outside, because it is from outside. There are no giant booming noises. I still have no idea what this Blair Witch thing is, because this is a sequel, but it feels like a remake. Yeah. Cause and, th and we're saying that, like, not like... You know, like people are saying like, oh, Creed is a remake, Force Awakens is a remake. This is like the exact same This story. is the exact same movie. Yeah. It's people getting lost in the woods, looking for the Blair Witch, and they bring their fancy technology. Guess what? The technology doesn't work. The only real difference they had was that there were more cameras, the drone, the little earpiece, anything. But at one point, the technology just stops working. So at that point, there is quite literally nothing that differentiates this from the first one other than it's got new characters, whom I could not give a flying fuck about. What I was kind of thinking about when I was watching this movie was a movie that came out earlier this year that I know you didn't like, but I like. It was 10 Cloverfield Lane. It was really different than the first Cloverfield, and I liked that. Where, and it's like, I kind of wish that they had done something more like that which was, it was kind of its own separate sort of thing that kind of connected to the first one in the end, whereas this was just, like, the same thing. I would have rather them do something different, like they did with, uh, Tank Field. I completely agree with that. I don't necessarily mind that they put the kids back in the woods. I would just like to know more. Yeah. Because if I'm watching this as a sequel, a continuation of this story, We've got a million questions that are unanswered from the first one, me. like... What's the point of sequel? Right. Exactly. And this one just felt content with doing the same thing, but throwing in vague shapes. In this one, you'll hear this giant roar, kind of like a, a huge bear mixed with an ant from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you'll see, like, these legs pop out, like, with hair, or you'll see this figure and it kind of looks like the zombies from I Am Legend meet the bad thing from Legion. Yeah, the thing from Legion. It could be anyone you want yeah. because it's so blurry and so odd that you don't get a chance to really catch it. What if it's wrong? Like what? <laughs> I hate this trend. What if, like, at the end, they turn the camera around and it's Haram, but he's like, I was alive. That explains everything. <laughs> you have to turn around the corner so you can't see him. The hairy legs, the growl, the fact that he's in the woods in Maryland. Like, 
Cincinnati? Is it Ohio, Maryland? He could have he could have traveled the woods. What did we like about this? Our horror movie performances. Uh, I thought they were. Yeah, they were good. I, I, I don't know any of the actors' names because they're I'm an asshole, but and I didn't look it up. Who cares? I feel like that would be a good thing though if it's supposed to be a uh, yeah. footage film. Yeah. If you know who the actors are in the context of the elements right. of it being yeah, like with person like with Chronicle, like now we know who Dane DeHaan and Michael B. Jordan is, but when it came out, like they were nobodies. I will say the one guy that I thought was a standout, I don't remember his name. It's the dude, like the weird dude who found the video. Oh, discount Miles Teller. Yeah, <laughs> his character could have really. Been could have become like really annoying like really fast because there's usually like one annoying dude in the horror movie that you want to die but actually like I thought his character was pretty interesting there was that annoying horror guy in the horror movie it was the black first. guy, which was shocking because the black guy always dies first in the horror movie, and it's always like it's o he's always the guy you like. But the black dude in this movie was like a cool. dick, like he was a total asshole. The black guy Peter? went and took a pit. Yeah, Peter took a piss by his own. Maybe it's because his name is Peter and not like Laquan or <laughs> Demetrius or something. Like he's the whitest black guy, so he's the one that does the stupid horror cliches. That's the only way I can figure it. It was probably not written as like a black guy role. It was just like probably not, and then they just cast this dude. Yeah. Which I mean, hey, inclusion, but you still killed off the black guy first. Okay. Ashley, the black guy's girlfriend, she breaks her ankle or she like steps on something and gets a cut. And it's a recurring thing through this movie that that cut's getting worse and it's getting infected and stuff. And I guess I was supposed to like freak you out. It just was weird. Yeah, by the by the very end, she has this big scene where she sees something protruding out of her leg and you know she like squeezes the injury and pus starts coming out and our audience goes ah! mm -hmm. in face face. Why are you waving in front of the best confused man? Oh shit. Fuck I forgot that was back there. Why Dude. do you have that back there, Daniel? Because I needed to We should not shop them, mm -hmm. I'd be worried. So. She starts squeezing this pus out, and then she starts pulling. What was that? Like, it looks like a, a worm tree or a parasite branch? or something. It, it looks kind of like a parasite. Yeah, it was wiggling. Okay, so yeah, it was like a bug. I was like, the fuck. I and thought. And that was explained whenever he, her boyfriend like poked her ankle, and the thing popped out, and yeah, like, swam back. That's what in I was thinking. Quick. Okay. It probably crawled through the cut in her foot, and then ate through her leg, and then came out the other end. <laughs> What's weird is... Which you would be able to walk if that happened. Like, if yeah. it's like that big, it's eating its way through your muscle and everything. Yeah. You're not going to be able to walk, let alone climb a tree on that leg. What I thought that was, was the work of the Blair Witch. The way the Blair Witch gets people is often related to trees. So what I thought happened was that she, like, cut herself and then a root, start, like, a seed got her in her foot and she started, like, growing roots or something. That would be cool. What I thought was going to happen was that she would grow roots and then turn into one of those monsters, the big growly monsters that we don't Hagrown. know. Yeah, like that would have been really cool. All the people that get lost in the woods, you'll never find them because they're the tree monsters. Like that makes sense to me. And I guess you can imply that, but the movie doesn't really give you anything to work with. Do you think this movie would have been better if it was just, you know, what they originally were doing and it was just the woods and it was just a horror movie and it had nothing to do with Blair Witch? I don't think so because then we'd call it a Blair Witch ripoff and the ripoff wouldn't be any good. No, the reason I came was for Wingard. Yeah, same here. And some of the stuff he was doing was cool, like the scene we mentioned earlier where the Ashley's climbing the tree and I thought, oh, this is really cool because it puts you in that position like, oh my god, is she gonna fall or not? Like, when is she gonna fall, I guess is the question. And then uh, the scene you see in the trailer where Lisa, like, uh, this is at the very end of the movie, where she's crawling through that tunnel and it's super claustrophobic and you don't know what's going on. It's their version of uh, Heather looking, like saying her goodbye speech while snot crying. It's the main girl, she's lost James, because James is looking for Heather inside the house. They eventually go in the house. By this point, she's the only one left until this jump scare happens through a cut. 
it's not that they switch the camera around, it's that they cut it and suddenly, oh, there's a dude there and it turns out to be Discount Miles Teller who's gone insane. We think he's dead. He just grabs her, knocks her out a bit, or like incapacitates her and throws her inside this basement tunnel cellar where a monster is supposed to be there but when she's inside that tunnel which i thought would be like the feeding grounds for like a giant snake or something there's just growly noises and nothing happens then she climbs out of the tunnel she meets and uh, she goes back this is the point where the movie felt to me like it was just recycling its own footage because you would see the same shot of the stairway again and the same rooms that she was in yeah. and it was all so shaky that at that point I was just like I, I don't know what the fuck's going on I stopped caring I'm just waiting for the big jump scare and then the camera to fall like in the first one and then the movie to end well if you clicked on the time code welcome back we've been talking for a bit about Blair Witch and now here comes our final thoughts uh, I'm gonna start with Brittany I feel like this movie basically took me out to a nice dinner, took me home to his apartment, you know, had some candles on the nightstand, <laughs> got me undressed, and then left me on the bed. I'm gonna give it to him. I was really disappointed. Daniel? This is the Blair Witch Project with more cameras and shakier editing. And it's louder. Um, yeah, two out of six. Okay, I'm gonna give it a two and a half because it's not poorly made, the, the acting is fine. It's just the same old horror movie. Not like I'm a huge Blair Witch fan, but Adam Wingard's a talented director and he's done like interesting things with the horror genre in the past and this just felt like yeah. the same old thing. So I can't quite, I can't go that low just because I didn't think it was like, you know, there was, it's not like it was awful filmmaking or whatever. It's just like, I was just bored. Like, I, I, I wanted to fall asleep at points. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to click the like button below. Also below is the subscribe button, and that'll let you know whenever new content is available. We've also got Facebook and Twitter pages. You can like us and follow us there. Also down below, we've got Liam's blog. He does a lot of the movies that we often don't get a chance to go see. But speaking of stuff that's coming up next, we've got Snowden later this week, speaking of Oliver Stone. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I believe next week we're doing Magnificent Seven yep. and Storks. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you want to go see Goat? Yeah. If Goat comes out in theaters, the, uh, the college hazing thriller starring fucking Nick Jonas and James Franco. Supposed to be getting like super rave yeah, reviews. Yeah, I got really good reviews at uh, Sundance. So. Good night. Go watch the original. Fucking. Go watch uh, Chronicle. Go watch The Guest. Go watch Cloverfield. Go watch 10 Cloverfield Lane. Go, go watch your... Casablanca. Go get your early tickets for Jack Reacher Never Go Back. Never stop. Never gonna give you up. Never, Never gonna, gonna let, let you down. down. Never, Never gonna, gonna turn around and desert you.